Friend is someone you can count on any time, day or night. But in this troubled world, friends are few. But I met one at an altar who changed my life one night. One who's never failed me, he's been true. They that 
But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits for God. For our God is a great king. Hallelujah. He is a great king. There is none like unto me. Praise the Lord. Church, we need to wake up. We need to wake up and stand and prove ourselves strong for the master. Today, you will not see a burning bush for you to know that, hey, what is happening in the bush? No. God is speaking. He is even speaking louder than the burning bush. James chapter 5. Towards the back of the Bible, James. James. Of the endurance of Job, a 
say you have seen the Lord's purpose and how he richly blessed him in the end. He's trying to tell us something. He's comparing our situation to what Job went through. He says we must endure. We must be patient. And we wait for that coming. And he says we have seen all that Job went through. You know about Job. How he suffered. How one day news came to him that all his children were dead. His cattle, his belongings, processions, houses built in one day. <laughs> have you suffered like Job before? I haven't. Yet Job refused to curse the Lord. The wife said no. Turn your face and curse the Lord. Job said no. In James, He's referring us to Job in the Old Bible, in Old Testament. And he's telling us that how the Lord blessed him in the end. In as much as the Lord is full of pity and compassion and tenderness and mercy, our God is merciful. Verse 12 says, About all things, my brethren, do not swear. Either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, let your yes be yes. Hallelujah. And your no be no. So that you may not sin and fall under condemnation. Let your yes be yes. Not Main places. There are times in your life you must be able to say no. Hallelujah. There are times you must be bold to say no. Don't say it sarcastically. Say it with reverence. Oh, sorry. This time maybe I can't be of help. Oh, no. When you say yes, stick to your yes. Hallelujah. Stick to your yes. He says, Above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. Let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Then he says, Is any among you afflicted, ill treated, suffering, evil? Is any of you, any among you afflicted? He says, What? Let him pray. Let him pray. If you are suffering, if you are being ill treated, God is saying, pray. Is any merry? Is anyone glad at heart? He should say praises to God. He says, if you are happy, <laughs> let him sing songs. Praise the Lord. Is any sick among you? Is any sick among you? He doesn't expect us to be sick. So he's saying, However, is any sick among you? He says, Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you are sick, remember to send for the elders of the church. Don't be angry and say, I was sick for three weeks and nobody, nobody even came to visit me. 
did you send for the elders of the church? He says, come for them. Because I know people who have stopped going to church because they said, when I was in trouble, nobody came. How would they know if you don't send for them? He says, when you call for them, they will pray over you. And anoint you with oil. Verse 15 says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sea, and the Lord shall raise him up. Hallelujah. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Praise the Lord. And here it says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Is this confess of false one? Hallelujah. You want a healthy church, a united church, brethren that stick together. So he says, if your neighbor hurts you, if your brother wrongs you, Acknowledge it. Oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. He didn't say you should confess all your sins from morning to evening. No. He's telling you that, that just acknowledge what I was wrong. I'm sorry. Can we make it up and pray for one another? Until that is done, there will be sickness in the body. Thank you. 
will bring unity? How do we bring solution to issues like this? And when you come here, I make you open the Bible. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, for us the body is one. Not your body. <laughs> It's referring to a car body, the universal body of Jesus Christ, which is the church. It says, For us, the body is one and have many members. It's an allegory. It's making a reference. Our body is one and has many members. You have the finger, the eye, the mouth, the nose, the toes. Hallelujah. He says that all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. Praise the Lord. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Hallelujah. We are all baptized into one body, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do you know you are in Christ Jesus? He says, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Hallelujah. Think of how those people, this scripture was given to the first time, how they would take it. The Jew believes that they are the elect of God. They see themselves like, hey, as for us, we are special people for God. The Gentile, they are the outcasts. The Jew has nothing to do with the Gentile. The bond, the slave. Think, Paul is telling them that we are all one. Hallelujah. All one. He says, look, you have all been and have been all made to drink into one spirit. We drink from one spirit, Jesus Christ. He made it available to us. I said one day we'll get to heaven and realize that, oh, after all, we were all one. So what's the fighting for? What's the challenge for? Hallelujah. There has to be unity all the time. I'm not preaching this today because there's a fight going on in this church. No. I want you to know that if we can walk as one body, and everybody will play their role, everybody will function well, if this hand is only buffing your body, and this one says, I won't do anything. You need this one to fetch water, and this one to hold the spoons. And this hand says, as for me, I'm tired today. So only this hand is buffing the body. How are you going to enjoy it? God is telling us something, how the church of God functions. And it's related to the body of the human being. Hallelujah. It says, verse 14, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Verse 16, If the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, imagine the whole body is an eye. Where were the hearing? Praise the Lord. <laughs> if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Verse 8 says, But now have God set the members, every one of them in the body. As it had pleased him. So God, it pleased God to make somebody the eye, make someone the mouth, make someone the leg. It pleased God all for what? 
to function together in the body. So in the house of God, you may have leadership, you may have those in the committee, you may have the uh, whole venue management team, you may have the preachers, you may have the deacons, the deaconesses. God has set these people in place so that the body, which is the church, can function properly. Are you contributing to the house of God? What role are you playing? How are you supporting the work? Do you pay your tithes here to build the church? Do you give offerings? Are you in the prayer meetings? A church that doesn't pray, pray is a dead church. The fuel that runs a church is prayer. First, prayer. Then, money. I've told you before, today you can't take a bag of rice and bring it here and climb up there and go and see the management and say, oh, we don't, since we don't have cash, we are bringing a bag of rice to pay our rent. They will throw you away. <laughs> you can't go to the TV stations and say, we are coming to pay our rent with a tube of yam and a car. No. We need money. To keep running. And all that I've been trying to read and explain is to draw your mind to the body, how the body functions. The hands, the legs, the eyes, everything leaves to function for the body. And we are the parts of that body. You may be the leg, you may be the toe. Imagine one of your toes is swollen this morning. Believe me. You won't be at peace. You can't even wear shoes. And the Bible is telling us that even those parts that we think they are feeble, they will need them. I need all of you. I need you more than you think to move the church forward. Hallelujah. Things have changed. A church is always run by pastors, reverends, bishops. It doesn't matter the name they give themselves. All is pastoral work. Praise the Lord. And when that happens, there has to be a dickiness, a dickiness is in the house. Elders in the house. To watch over affairs. Praise the Lord. And we are one in spirits. Glory be to his name. A friend is someone you can count on any time, day or night. But in this troubled world, friends are few. But I met one at an altar who changed my life one night. One who's never failed me been true. His name is Jesus. He's the one that I turn to. My friend. Someone I can always count on. Someone I can cast my cares on. He's an ever-present help. Time and time again.